going on guys? Real quick before we jump into today's video, I just want to let you know that any of the products that I'm using, including the grill, uh, any of the tools, any of the splicing, you know, whatnot, is going to be in the description below. Anything that I've ever done, there is an Amazon affiliate link in the description below. If you guys are going to get something, please use one of my links. It helps me out a ton. Um, hopefully you guys like the video. Let's get started. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install the Ford Raptor replacement grill on a 2004 to 2008 Ford F-150. It's real easy, so let's go. Alright guys, so there's a few things that we need to do before we put it on our truck. First, obviously we have to do a uh, get it out of the box. So, I ordered this guy off of Amazon by a company called Seven Sparta. Um, these are the uh, attachment LED things, wiring harnesses for the amber LEDs. Specifically, this is the one that comes with the F and the R for the Ford grill, but I'll show you guys that in a second. So, this is what the grill looks like when you take it right out of the package. See, it's got this like dodo or dude or however you say this. So, this part is going to be replaceable, and this part is going to be replaceable. In the box, they give you, let's see if I can find it, here we go. In the box, <clears throat> they send you the replacement F and R Ford letter grills, Ford letters. Here's the F, and here is the R. So essentially, you're going to remove this guy, and you're going to put the F there, and then you're going to remove this guy, and you're going to put the R there, and then it's going to say Ford. It's very, very easy to remove the two pieces that you need to remove. All you're going to do is flip it over, and you can see you've got four Phillips head screws to remove right there, one, two, three, four Phillips head screws to remove right there, and then you'll just slide these guys underneath on the other side, and screw the four screws into the four holes. And then when you flip the grill back over, it'll say Ford. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my Phillips head screwdriver, I'm gonna unscrew those eight total screws, I'm gonna replace it with the F and the R, I'm gonna uh, screw the eight screws back in, and then I'll show you guys what it looks like once the grill actually says Ford and not, you know, how it comes. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the four screws out right here. I just want to make sure that you guys knew exactly like what I was talking about. So after you get those, you know, guys unscrewed, these parts are going to pop out and then you're going to be replacing them with the parts that obviously you want. It's very, very easy. They just slide right back under. Everything is really good fitment. It's just hard to do this with one hand because I'm trying to hold the camera with the other hand. And so there you go. See, it just popped right into place right there. Now you're going to take your screws and one, two, three, four. Same thing with the other side. You're going to slide this guy out. Now that we've got the screws out, you're going to replace it with the R that comes in the package. And then when you flip it over, your grill will say Ford. Okay, so after you've got everything screwed in and you're making sure you did it securely, when you flip the grill over, it will say Ford. So as you can see, we just replaced this guy right here with the F and this guy right here with the R. So now you've gotten everything ready and now we can actually take it outside and install it on the truck. All right guys, so we're out of the truck now. It's time to take off your old grill. So obviously, first thing you're gonna need to do, pop the hood of your truck. Then you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket and a socket wrench. You've got two um, 10 millimeter bolts right here that are attached to this control arm. So they'll be on, on this side and that side as well. And then you're gonna have about eight or so 10 millimeter bolts to unscrew all the way down there. And then the grill will pull right off. We're gonna unscrew all these guys and then I'll show you what I mean by this guy popping right off once everything is unscrewed. All right guys, all the screws are completely out of both the control arms that are kind of angled bracket right there and the eight ones that ran across the bottom of the actual grill 
all you're gonna do is slowly you're gonna pull down and out towards you I'll show you all the screws are out right now already it's just that easy to pull out your old grill after all the screws are out all right so now that you've got your old crappy grill off and it's sitting in the bed of your truck let's go ahead and install this brand new gorgeous Ford Raptor grill now something to keep in mind is that you may have to depending on who you bought the who you bought this grill from you may have to retain these uh, control brackets on all of your um, screws and whatnot luckily these guys actually when you buy their grill send you new control arms I'm calling them control arms but really they're just simply mounting brackets they send you two of those as well as screws and everything to put it back in but keep in mind depending on who you bought it from you may have to hold on to all of your old screws and whatnot that you took when you took off your old grill um, if you bought it um, from where I did you're in luck they send you all brand new stuff um, everything will be linked in the description below in case you guys are wondering who I bought it from but now let's go ahead and install this bad boy all right now there's a couple different ways you can install it you can attach the uh, brackets to your grill and then install it what I'm gonna decide to do first is put these new brackets in and I'm gonna install them just like that first and then I'm just gonna take the grill and slide it over the top of it so these guys are gonna go on first remember we took two 10 millimeter bolts out one right here and one right here same process to put them back in two 10 millimeter bolts one on top one on bottom if you guys to decide to use your OEM stuff that you took off as far as like screws and bolts wise to put it back in that's totally fine too you can do it either way All right, as you can see, we've got both of the arm brackets installed right here. Now we're gonna go around and we're gonna get the grill and we're gonna slide it back in. Um, I'll show you guys what I mean by that, but it should just slide right in to these holes. It should have a bunch of little, you know, bolts that are gonna, so if it's shaped like this, it'll probably have a plastic pin. If it's shaped like this, circular instead of oval, but circular, It'll have a bolt that sticks through it, and then you'll use the brackets, or the, um, the nuts rather, to tighten it down. Let's get the new one. Okay guys, so this grill actually doesn't already have the little bolts sticking out right here. If you look at all the hardware that they gave you, they've got the square head right there. So these guys will still fit through, um, through the circle ones up top, but what you're going to do is you're going to take the square, you're going to slide it in behind there and then from this guy sticking out right there just like this guy you'll feed this bolt through the circles right there and then from the other side to fasten it in you'll screw in one of these guys hopefully that makes sense I'll try and give you guys like a really in-depth look um, of what it you know looks like and everything like that as I'm doing it but I am filming by myself so bear with me I'm trying to get you guys the best angle that I can all right guys hopefully you guys don't run into this but because these guys aren't actually attached to the physical grill it's actually really hard to get them to you know feed through all the holes and whatnot so basically what I've done is I've fed them through this little gap right here and then just kind of let them fall through you know it's definitely doable but it's just a little bit annoying so if you guys are wondering like how I'm doing this if you guys bought this exact product at home you know it's it's a little time consuming but it's not difficult it's just a little bit annoying so that's how I'm getting the bolts to actually fall through the holes all right so after a much more difficult than I need to be processed we've got all of the bolts sticking through with the nuts loosely fastened around them that way we can adjust them adjust the grill as need be because now you're gonna come over to the hardware that they gave you you're gonna take one of these flat washers right here and put the screw through it because you've got a few screws to put in right here that are gonna attach the actual this uh, bracket right here 
to the grill. There's only three per side. Um, you guys don't need to see that process. This is the hardware that you're using to install it with. And there's three on this side and three on that side. All right guys, so now I've got everything tightened down, screwed in, bolted in, tightened. Now's for the moment of truth. Let's check the fitment. Ooh, that looks yummy. Dang, it even goes really well with the, um, the gray goes great with the two-tone paint job I've got going too on the truck. Gosh dang, that looks fantastic. Let me close this door real quick. Give you guys a better view. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks great. Heck yes. All right. So if all you wanted to see was how to actually install the grill, the video's over for you. But if you're like me and you wanted to go the extra mile and get the three amber LEDs to come with your grill and you want them to light up, stay tuned because I'm going to show you guys how to splice that in right now. Everybody else, thanks for watching. Everybody else, stay tuned. All right, guys. Time to walk you guys through how the splicing is going to work. So in order to do that, you're going to need to pull out your... Um, the body of the housing of your headlights rather. So to do that, there is a little flap right here. Phillips head screw needs to come out. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right here. And then behind the flap, once you pull it back, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter bolt on top, 10 millimeter bolt on the bottom. Once those are um, removed, all you're gonna do is pull up on this tab. The housing will slide out. Let's pull up on the tab. And the housing pulls right out. car drove by. Once you've pulled the uh, housing out, sorry about how dirty it is, this guy right here will just turn to the left. He'll pull right out. Now these two wires that you see right here are what we are going to be doing a quick splice into. I'll grab the wiring harness from uh, from the package for the, uh, the Raptor grill and I'll walk you guys through how to do it. Okay, so right here we have the wiring harness that came with the um, with the headlight or the headlights sorry with the grill so these male plugs right here are going to plug in to the female plugs right up here so as you can see you've got three of these things one two and three these three are going to plug into one Get this guy out of here two and three so you got three plugs going in here and then on the tail end of the wiring harness you've got your grounding end and your hot end so these uh, tail ends right here are what you're going to be splicing into these two wires right here okay guys so I had a lot of tape around these wires right here but I just used a utility knife to cut a bunch of it back that way I can expose both of these wires individually. So as you can see, we've got our black one and then this is super faded and everything, but this is what we're gonna be splicing our red wire into. The process of doing that, I'm gonna be using a quick splice. These are super user-friendly, very hard to mess up. I got them from AutoZone. I think it was like a 12 pack for like $3. Everything that I'm using in today's video is linked in the description below. Uh, let me set you guys up so I can show you guys how I'm going to be doing this. Okay. So, as you can see on this quick splice right here, we've got this open end right here. We are going to be taking the black wire from here and sliding it through this opening that you guys are seeing right here. Sorry, my middle finger. This outside thing right here. Once that's through, we're going to close this up. Snaps, in, snaps into place like that. So. Open it up, slide the black wire through it, and we're closing it up. And now, we're going to be taking the black wire, see how we've got all the exposed copper here on the end. We're going to be feeding it through the hole next to this. Okay, 
And after you've got it in there, oh, keep it snapped in. You're gonna take some pliers or whatever that you've got and you're gonna pinch down, you're gonna squeeze this thing down and that's gonna create your connection. Should be all the way down. All right, looks like it should be all the way down to where you can completely close this thing. There you go. So now this blue part that was open now stays down. Remember earlier it was fanned up like, sorry. Remember earlier it was fanned up like this. Now it's closed with this silver thing completely pinched down. So now we're gonna repeat the same process with the red wire. Um, hopefully you guys are able to follow along. I'm doing the best I can. I am in no means a professional. Please do not kill me in the comments for the, my splice splicing process. Don't kill me in the comments for how I speak my words either. Time to do the red wire. Same process for the red wire. We've got this guy. We're gonna open him up like that, slide our, um, uh, this guy should probably be on the outside. Yeah. Slide that guy in. Alright, he's in. Now we're going to take the red end from our wiring harness. Get him all nice and firm. Shove him in this hole. All right, now he's in there. We're going to pinch this guy together to create our connection. All right, he's connected. We're going to close this guy. And now these guys are locked into place. Now that you've got everything spliced into place, now is the time to plug in these guys to your plugs in up here and make sure that the lights actually turn on. If your lights aren't turning on, definitely the place where you messed up, or more than likely I messed up, is in this connection with these guys down here. That's almost always the place. So after you get everything plugged in, go ahead and turn on your truck, make sure that the lights are coming on and everything is as it should be. And if it does, congratulations, you did it right. If not, go check the connection. And just so you guys at home can see that, yes, I did actually do this correctly. Yay, the amber lights are illuminating just as they should be. Everything has been set up correctly. So now, um, more than likely, I'm going to be like zip tying these guys and maybe pushing them to the side. I'm just really nervous about this guy getting caught in the hook. Um, this hook right here when I close the, uh, the hood of the truck. See, yeah, this guy's lighting up too. Everything went as it should be. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead and zip tie this. After I zip tie everything, I'm gonna show you guys like the final uh, like placement and everything of where it is. Cause like the last thing you wanna do is spend all this time getting all this done and then you close your hood and then you cut like a wiring harness or something like that. So I'm gonna get everything zip tied out of the way and then I'll show you guys the final product. Okay, so I'll show you guys what I did. Um, I took the zip ties and I got them out from out of the way so they won't get caught in the hook. So I zip tied three of them together over here, followed down, zip tied to the back, zip tied again right here, and then obviously the splices are down in there. So as you can see, the, tr the hood is fully open and there still is a little bit of slack and when it comes down, it's not gonna mess with anything. So everything's out of the way, everything is completed. Let's run through the final thing. Um, let me let me turn the lights on for you guys so you can see um, that in fact the LEDs 
are in fact working. Come around to the front. So with the running lights, as you can see, the amber LEDs are all illuminated. Very bright, it's still daylight outside, and my goodness guys, this just looks incredible. I am so, so happy that I finally did this, and hopefully this is very helpful and informative to all you guys. I'm exhausted. This took me a long time. Now that I know how to do everything, I could probably knock it all out in under 45 minutes, but because I had to run to AutoZone twice, because I was lacking a couple different tools, um, which I talked to you guys about in the beginning of this video, um, if I had had all that and knew what I was doing from the get-go, it probably would have taken me like half an hour to 45 minutes to completely do, guys. But here's my truck. I love it. Appreciate you guys watching. If you guys are brand new, go ahead and subscribe right now. We're on our way to a thousand. That is just crazy to me. The fact that we're almost at a thousand subscribers right now is just absolutely insane to me. And it's all because of you guys. It's all because of your support. Um, I love what I do and I love the fact that I get to help you guys and get to meet a lot of you awesome people along the way too. Everybody who's like reaching out to me, asking me questions on Instagram or just messaging me like pictures of your truck and whatnot, like don't even hesitate, dude. I'm not like a big time YouTuber, I'm not like a celebrity or anything like that, dude, I'm just a freaking guy. I'm a guy who likes to work on trucks and a guy who likes to, you know, meet other people who like to work on their trucks, man. So keep the support coming, keep the messages coming, keep the love coming. I appreciate it. We will catch all you guys next time.